All right, guys, on today's video, I am going to be showing you again how to change your fuel filter on your 2001 Dodge Ram with the 5.9 Cummins. I'm going to be using the Fleet Guard filter, and this is going to make the job a lot easier. This is a socket that is a shallow uh, 29 millimeter that is designed for this um, cap on the fuel filter housing. It makes it much, much, much easier if you use the proper socket. And uh, I will link both of these items on uh, Amazon so you can, uh, can do that. So the fuel filter on the 2001 Dodge particularly is not um, the easiest thing to get to. In fact, I'm gonna take this off the tripod because the sun is not cooperating. So it's right there, and yeah, it's a little, it's easy if you uh, have the right tools. You gotta be careful, this, this is a plastic composite cap screwing onto an aluminum housing. Now I look back in my records, and it has been three years since I last changed the fuel filter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the shot as best I can. Um, but I'm going to loosen the cap right here, and then I'm going to use my extractor, and I will suck out the fuel that's in there, pull the old cartridge element out, replace the O-ring that's on the cap, and reinstall this. And I'll show you how to cycle the fuel pump without starting the engine so that you don't starve the injection pump for fuel. That's very important. The procedure to do that is very simple but you do need to do it and um, so let's get right to it all right so my setup i've got a the socket a 3 8 inch it's a 3 8 inch drive i've got an extension and i've got my ratchet i've seen a lot of these caps stripped right where the uh you know, people trying to use wrenches and trying to use all kinds of stuff. Now, before I take the cap all the way off, I'm going to grab my extractor and have it ready. And let me grab a paper towel. Okay, once it's completely off, I'm going to lift the cap off. Now, the filter will probably be stuck to the cap. It should be. I'm going to do it very slowly so I don't slosh fuel out. And you heard it, you hear the vacuum brake. And I'll bring this up and there's, I'll show you the filter in a minute. I'm going to put it over at the drain pan. Now, some people, they just put the filter back in there. I don't like to do that. I'm going to put the extractor in here. and extract that. Because I want to see if there's anything on the bottom. Any debris or anything. I can't really see, so I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod. So there is a little bit of grit in the bottom and that's to be expected. I'm going to try to get as much out as I can. It's just like an air filter on the dirty side of the filter. It's going to be filthy. And on the clean side. That is the dirty side of the filtration system. So I don't like, definitely, definitely, definitely don't use shop rags. I don't like sticking anything in there, including paper towels. 
The best way to do that is to spray some cleaner in there and then continue to, or, or some clean diesel fuel and continue to um, put the extractor in there to remove any debris. It's not a lot. The way this works is that the fuel flow goes from the outside to the inside and into the injection pump. So uh, that is again the dirty side. But if there's a lot of if there's a lot of debris in there then go ahead and remove it. All right, so I've got the filter cap with the old filter remove. It just basically these teeth right here grip onto the outer top portion and I'm just going to take my fingernail and remove the o-ring. Always replace the o-ring when you're doing this job. Just slide it right off like that. And I'm going to open the new filter. I'm going to take the o-ring out. And just lay it in that groove. Make sure it's seated all the way around. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the filter. Now there's two ways, some people put the filter in there and then put the cap on. I like to go ahead and, and uh, put the cap on first, like that. Okay, there's, an, there's a grommet right here that's going to fit over the, um, the shaft that's sticking up. So we're ready to go ahead and reinstall this and we'll do that next. Okay, so here's where people really screw up. As I said before in the first part of the video, this is plastic, so be careful. Um, you just need to... Um, Put it over the shaft and there is going to be a little bit of resistance okay and then it'll come down now <clears throat> you need to make sure to very very lightly thread this cap on because this cap will go on crooked so quick and every single time I've ever tried to put this on and the reason is because the o-ring it's it doesn't want to thread on very easy. Okay, I finally uh, got it to where it was seated properly. And I was able to screw this down probably about three turns by hand when it's sitting correctly. If you can't do that, then it's not on correctly. Here is the important procedure. That canister is dry. There's no fuel in there. We have to fill this up with fuel and the only way to do that, the easy way, is to cycle the key. Just barely bump the starter, cycle the key, and let the fuel pump fill up the housing but not start it. So you'll hear the fuel pump. I don't know if you guys can hear it running with all the wind. This is an aftermarket fast pump that's a thousand times better than the old Carter that was in here. Five times obviously wasn't enough. So, <laughs> ran out of fuel. All right, so she's back up and running. The reason I showed you guys that 
and don't edit that out is because that's gonna happen to you. I like to try to keep everything real and show you guys what really can happen. So what the way that I fixed that was I didn't actually have to bleed it. I, at the injectors, I just cycled the fuel pump five more times and then cranked it about 10 seconds twice and it fired right up. Um, that happens from time to time. It just depends. Uh, I, don't, or I don't know how old that pump is. Uh, I will do a, a fuel test on that when I dig my gauge out and see what, what we're putting out, but it happens. Uh, don't panic when it happens. Uh, certainly when you replace the fuel filter, please go ahead and, and extract out the, the fuel in there. Even if you didn't do that, it's still, there's gonna be some air in there that you have to get out and it just happens usually usually what happens is that when i cycle it a couple times five six times crank it it will act like it's going to die and work its the air out it must have just not filled the canister up as far as i thought it had no big deal uh, it's not going to hurt the vehicle at all the problem is if you have a carter pump and you do this and it just doesn't make any pressure you can crank till the batteries die and it's not going to stop. I have had times where I have replaced the fuel filter and I just couldn't get it to prime the filter housing and I ended up having to replace the pump because the pump was tired. What what happens on that is that the pump the last time the filter was changed was enough to fill it up and then as the pump slowly degrades and you never open it there's never any air in there and the injection pump is strong enough to pull to continue to pull fuel from the tank that's not how it's designed it's not good for it that's why they have the booster pump on there to draw the fuel from the tank and pressurize the housing and the up to the injector and then the injector takes over um, but yes, I've replaced many a Carter pump. I'll never use Carter again. The fast pump that I've got on there is a replacement for the Carter and it fits exactly in the same um, mounting bracket, same connectors, fuel connectors, everything. It just looks different. It's not a, it's a different style. I think the Carter is a rotary and this is a, maybe a diaphragm. I don't know. Anyway, but it, it's been on there and I've never had to re had any problems with it yet anyway so uh, that's how you do the fuel filter change and the possible things that can happen no big deal just work with it be patient and i will see you guys on the next video